we're checking out Subfactory. It's a VST, AU, and most importantly, an MPC plugin. Basically, it has a whole bunch of different features that I don't know, run of a mill. I got a loop here, and we're gonna navigate through the UI. The UI itself has, it's built of two different oscillators and then a sample oscillator. So these are different, different waveforms. You have different ones that you can go through. And I believe, whoa, if I'm not mistaken, it says analog here. So yes, you can change every aspect that you want. Uh, for example, let's go with a dirty. No, let's do something a little bit more exciting than that. Let's do sign multi. And you can kind of tell that the bass changed a little bit. Yeah. And you can turn on and off oscillators. That's the thing, right? Yeah, right. So, you know, you can kind of select things and blend stuff in. You can do some level of FMing, but I haven't explored that yet. And then you can also add samples. If I take my sample out of here of this, of this bass, then you'll see that this is more of a body. It's called bin, and you can load up different tones. So 808 one shots, growl. It's pretty tough. Uh, there are a couple of other things that can you can do and I'm just exploring it or whatnot some more uh, they you can look at the subs so you can control that so for example you want to set up a different one you can do it over here and now I'm just making some wild 808s without even trying you can change pitch of course, changing pitch would be relative to what you got, since my stuff is already in tune. I would want to keep it in tune. Uh, you can change the index, and surprisingly, it looks a lot like Serum when you change the index, and it works in this such manner, just like that. As when I changed the index, it started modulating around it so that is frequency modulation oh so that's how you would do that on here so surprise and and that 808 is going insane now of course there's some other things i did to the 808 that you did not see because i'm this is going to be from the live stream uh you have different envelopes i think these are key things that you will always see an envelope has its own life to it Let's go over here, let's change some of the curves here. Uh, you can change the attack, and that change stayed away. So you see the importance of owning your 808. See, now that 808 in itself has more of a thud sound. I would love to hear that on my damn speakers, but I can't do that. I can just Listen on my headphones here and turn things up and, but yeah. So messing with the, the different regions, the cat, of course the attack, decay, sustain, release will change everything. And this right here is insane. You can do this exact same thing with pitch. You can touch on these tabs, of course, to get to, to get to that. And then that causes all kinds of wild, wild squiggly shit. You can choose where you want to assign it. Let's just make something really stupid. Hopefully you can reset it. <laughs> if not, that's not too bad. same thing to the filter and then change the cut up cut off and whatever i mean it's just basically the same you know uh then you have the sample you can look at the sample the sample looks like it can be changed from pitch
pitch. out of tune uh, <laughs> make sure that your 808 is not out of tune or anything like that or if your 808 is out of tune or whatnot then you can kind of retune it in here if you use a sample I mean you could do that but then you got start and end point wow interesting and a delay which is settles as an offset. So you can have all kinds of interesting things happen. You can even add filters to it, cut off. That's wild. You can get really wild with your 808. clip the sampler too so that is interesting but yeah and then of course the sample has its own individual in envelope in which you can change that and then you can choose the side chain maybe you want a side chain and maybe we want to put that back in here right For the sub, thank you for the sub. All right, so in side chaining, this is where things get interesting because you can make your kick hit some uh, other aspects. Like you can have a side chain, uh, the sub one square, which is going absolutely nuts. So I would have to do something like change the pitch or just turn the pitch off. Now I don't have to worry about it. Uh, so what I want to do, I guess, intentionally is just let you hear it, how it sounds like. So let's go ahead back to the sample and we have side chain off. You can hear the, so you'll be able to hear the frequency content change. Uh, mind you, the, the harmonic from the oscillator one, which is A or A in this course would be what you will hear being sidechain. So if I turn it on, you can hear it duck. And then you can give it pre-game. So let's go ahead and dive into sidechaining a little bit more. Let's give it a slower attack. I'm gonna release. And then you can set the amount. You can reverse it to where uh, it's the stuff from A and B will be side chaining the sample if that's what you're hearing right now. And this is a strong tool because that means you can make really what it means is that you can make really big kicks have like this small subtail. You can have a really small subtail and bro, I'm going to tell you right now, you don't want to sleep on that. The other ends of it, of course, is this. And we're on the mix, so you can choose to leave a certain amount of A or B or even the sampler. So this is A, essentially. It's kind of weak, right? You can change the level of it. Let's go ahead and change the pitch. So we can hear it. Let's pick out a different Now nah, that's a little too much. We don't want that, something that audible, but we want it to be audible though. So when we introduce everything else back into it, we have a strong little 808 there. I am curious. I am curious of what kind of sample are in here. 
so we have a delayed sub we, we don't want a delayed sub let's see if we could just find a kick if they have the good old-fashioned rack kit in here so we got kicks we have round knocker let's go in here let's go over here to the sample i'm gonna mess with uh the envelope again because i got it going absolutely insane Now that we have that set up better, work about the tone. There is a little bit of ramping on this. This is uh, I, I ain't doing anything on the default. So certain things I'm gonna actually no. Let's turn off the mod uh, the mod for that. Then let's go to drive. Bro, let me live. You saw the kick was getting distorted when I was trying to distort the other part of that. I wonder if I can unassign that. What I'm gonna do is figure out a mission here. We're gonna be on a mission to find if that can be the case. And I think it might be a mix maybe? No. Let's get out of this donker. Let's go ahead, get out of donker. Let's go into analog. And it's ducking a little bit more than I want because I was being a stream with it. There we go. And let's go back to the mixer. A, a lot of your workflow, a lot of your workflow will be you going back and forth with the mixer and stuff like that. If you want to create like that 808, that special, not a special 808, but just special bass in general. So, you know, that would be the mission. Now let's go back to the effects, mess with drive. Now that I don't build up a basic idea of what I want to do inside of Subfactory, what I'll do is I'll just play with some of the waveforms that people can see, uh, the potential of what kind of sub base they can build. Uh, the potential is high, trust me. One thing I would definitely have to spend more time on this plugin would have to be uh, the sub filter. One of the features that I have to know a little bit more in sub factory would definitely be the LFO section, modulation section in assigning the LFOs. I do not know how to do it. I could take a wild guess, a swing in the dark, but I would not promise anything on it. But there's a lot I like about it. Uh, not too much I don't like about it.